From toy stores to tech stores and upfront in Black Friday ads, drones are on track to be all the rage this holiday. But before you make the leap, and they can be pricey, there are some things you need to know about drones. John Shumway has more new at six. The images are breathtaking. Cameras flying where cameras have never flown. Sweeping through St. Paul Cathedral, racing up the front walkway of a resort, soaring through the Sheraton's atrium at Station Square, giving a unique view of a home for sale or a place of civic pride or tradition. Just a sampling of the work of Dave King and his Steel City drones. The picture never wavers. Drones are claiming new pathways in the sky and growing in popularity. This is a, a DJI Phantom series. This is what everybody buys, essentially. Starting at about $500 in Best Buy, where prices range up to $1,500. But these are recreational drones. Dave Steel City drones range up to the DJI Matrice 600, in which he has about $21,000 invested. This has a uh, commercial-based GPS system. It's uh, a military precise to two centimeters of accuracy. And when I get there and fly it, it's just going to be a tripod in the sky. King not only is busy these days flying drones for clients, ranging from real estate marketing to promotional videos to Mositis Construction's demolition of the Greenfield Bridge, he also teaches the skills of drone flying, patiently, I might add, and says this is not child's play. You have a 25-pound thing that can kill people in the air. Which is why he and Jake Leidick of iBot Aerial Solutions are so serious about and sticklers for the rules. I learned how to fly an actual airplane to, 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 to do this stuff because I wanted to have a thorough knowledge of airspace. For commercial drone work, you do need a license. That is not the case for recreational users. No license. But there are serious rules about where you can fly, like over your neighbor's home. You have to have permission of the, of the property owner. Public properties like parks are restricted. There is a five-mile buffer zone around the 12 hospital heliports in our area, not to mention the airports. All no-fly zones for recreational flyers, unless advance notice is given to the flight operations center at the hospital or the airport. And as far as how high you can fly? I'm allowed to go 400 feet high, and I have to stay within reasonable line of sight. Dave's advanced drones have sensors that indicate altitude. Most recreational drones don't, so it's all guesswork work, which is why King worries about recreational flyers and the airspace above 400 feet. Helicopters, someone flying into a helicopter because there's 10 hospitals within five mile radius of Pittsburgh and the helicopter will come out of anywhere at any time. A drone into the tail rotor of a helicopter or smashing into the cockpit could have deadly results. King worries that mistakes by recreational flyers could impact the overall positive uses of drones. I geared it towards um, inspection, inspection work. Leidick says drones can go places and do jobs hazardous to people and he worries about irresponsible drone users. These are providing outstanding services for people to make their jobs easier and to be able to take the cost in dangerous work you can be eliminated now there are a lot of different sizes of drones you got these little tiny guys which are going to do more to the uh, damage to the stuff in your house than anything else and then you have this one this is actually a dji um, Phantom 3. This is the one that all the Walmarts and all these people are pushing as a Black Friday special. It's $500 or so. And that's $500, and it has to comply to all the rules. It also has to be registered with the FAA. You can't, if you don't, and you get caught flying it, yeah. $250,000 fine. Wow. Yeah, the FAA is serious about these things because, and you can't fly it over people, by the way, because if it falls out of the sky sure. from any kind of height, it can really, it could kill somebody. So what happens, take this for an example. So okay. if somebody gets this for Christmas, right. they go in the backyard, they start flying it. Now it is hovering over my house. Can I take a rock and throw at no. it and knock it? No. No, you can't do that. What you should do is take a picture of it over your house and call the police because you have not given permission for it to fly over your house. The reason you can't shoot it down or knock it down is you create an additional hazard of where it's going to come down if you do that. 
So you can't shoot it down, can't knock it down, but call the police and have a picture of it to prove that it was over your house. Okay, I've got a, I've got a couple of questions. First of all, do they all come with cameras? All, most of them do. Most of them most do. Of them, even this little guy, believe it or not, wow. has a little tiny camera right there. Wow, that's, that's pretty neat. Is it difficult to learn to fly? No. No, in fact, Dave taught me in about five minutes flying that one right there, and it was it was amazing. It is so much fun to do. It really is. So it's a lot easier than the old uh, uh, gasoline-powered uh, or, or whatever kind of airplanes that people right. would have that radio right. controlled. Yeah, absolutely, and it's a lot better than the helicopter. I flew into a portrait when I was a kid and had to pay for it. Uh, by the way, if you do go buy one of these, try and pick up the brochure that the American Model Academy has put out that has all the information you need to know about flying them. Make sure you're legal because it's expensive yeah, yeah. sounds like, like it. it all right, all right john thanks so much thank you john